Hey everyone, Chloe here and welcome back to this platform and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, ladies and lurkers and ear hustlers, welcome. So I wanted to have a conversation and I cannot wait to hear your responses to this article that was published by Buzzfeed about this ever growing lopsided dilemma of wives who are the breadwinners in their marriage. And this well-written expose was written by Vanessa Wong over at Buzzfeed entitled women who earn more than their husbands share what their marriages are really like, which I highly encourage you to read in its entirety. And the link will be in the description box below. Now the social media beat to death conversations that have been happening over the last five years about romantic relationships and traditional values and traditional marriage and nuclear families and hypergamy. And of course of women being fed up with the financial role reversal of hypogamy have all been topical and these conversations have pretty much remained on the surface. So in true Chloe fashion, let's try to take these conversations a little bit deeper because when push comes to shove, many modern women are doing their best in trying to figure out the kind of relationship dynamic that will ultimately work best for them. And that dynamic will also include deciding on whether or not that they can handle a huge financial gap in their marriages as the breadwinner, particularly because as women go up in the income scale, the number of available men becomes smaller. And because there are so many generically topical or weaponized conversations on hypergamy, the topic of provision can be a very triggering one, which will often mean that critical thinking from both men and women will either leave the chat or will be on full blown life support. While we often do not even consider the huge amount of women who want to be married or who are currently in marriages where their husbands are being financially outperformed and the huge emotional, mental, and spiritual toll that it will take on a man's wiring and overall the marital union itself. Now, of course, from the beginning of this channel, I have always encouraged hypergamy and feminine wellness as a standard, but some irrational feathers will be ruffled to hear this, but you can go argue with your mammy, but this needs to be said. It is mathematically impossible for all women to have hypergamy. And on a deeper level, it is mathematically impossible for women to have pay equity and career opportunities that will compete with men in the workforce without a good portion of men making less than the average woman. Hence the dilemma and the conundrum of finding a high value man that has absolutely nothing to do with having a scarcity mindset. Today's modern woman is making career strides that weren't even possible 20 years ago, which will ultimately mean that romantic relationships will be greatly affected and most certainly will not be in the favor of men. And sidebar, I highly recommend that you watch the Netflix hit show Beef to see a case study example of this role reversal dynamic where the wife is the hardworking breadwinner of her family while she wears the pretender mask of success and the mask of a woman who looks like she's enjoying her success, but who on the inside is suffering. But in this Buzzfeed article, as of 2023, around 30% of married women are now earning more than their husbands. Now, for those of you who have been with my channel from the beginning, many of you are already well aware of my backstory. And if you don't know, you can read about it on my website or listen to one of my old lives, or you can join the new feminine. But for the most part, Although I am not rigid, my happy place values are very traditional. I believe in two parent homes. I stand by hypergamy and I stand by the idea that husbands of any color, race, or nationality should provide for their wives, especially if they value having the pride, the worship, the acknowledgement, the validation, and the respect that all men so desperately crave from their families, from their wives, and from their romantic partners. But I also know how to hold a space for women who will undoubtedly not be able to fit into the mold of hypergamy, which is why I also encourage feminine wellness because life is complex and complicated. We are all in one way or the other, a product of our environment and many social workers can attest to this, but a lot of women in our community come from poverty or humble beginnings such as myself and many women of color are institutionalized and damaged and are suffering from low self-esteem 
And many women, particularly black women, do not have the infrastructure or the support system on very high levels, which will leave many women who want a provider, Prince Charming, very frustrated as we are living in a world where the male to female ratio has always been in the male's favor in terms of numbers, making competition for living the hypergamous life even that much more intense. So with that being said, this article does speak to the growing trend of hypogamy and stay at home husbands and the role reversal of breadwinner wives that includes all races of women including many white women with that number only projected to grow and sidebar can we all take a moment to once and for all stop this fairy tale naive magical thinking myth that all white women are out here living fairy tale lives of provision because there are many white men who are not providers and if you go to tiktok many of them are not the providers that you think as hypergamy is also a class issue ladies listen carefully who do you think founded MGTOW and the red pill movement? There are plenty of white men who expect their women to go half. And if you read this Buzzfeed article, you will mess around and find out. Now, all of the women in this article pretty much speak to all of the typical aches and pains that I have mentioned over the years on this platform. Things like wanting to rest, especially when the babies come, being afraid to have more babies because their husbands cannot afford for them to take maternity time off. Of course, there is also the issues of women working both in the workforce and still doing the majority of the household chores. There is also the issues of husbands feeling emasculated and growing resentful when they aren't in the financial driver's seat and husbands feeling inadequate and insecure and triggered when they are not the financial leaders in their marriages. Breadwinning wives will often silently feel deeply resentful and they eventually will silently lose respect for their husbands and they also lose that particular brand of desire called sexual polarity because the roles have been inverted where the wives are masculine and the husbands are feminine. Now, if a woman accepts her reality of being a high earning woman who does not want to limit herself to the small amount of men who earn the same or more, many women will choose to date and marry decent guys, decent hardworking guys who earn less. But overall, there is a deep sense of shame on both sides as many of the husbands in this article were even too embarrassed to publicly reveal their identities due to the fear of ridicule and harassment in the workplace. But here are some of the other article highlights. Buzzfeed News asked women who make more than their husbands to share what it is like as gender roles at work and home evolve, how they split their finances, their values about money, what's working and what isn't, and more than 1,000 people responded. And because there is a stigma of shame, many of the women that spoke with Vanessa Wong asked not to be identified by their full names or not to be named at all due to the worries that they would upset their spouses or harm their reputations. One woman wrote, it makes a lot of people really uncomfortable on both gender sides, says 39-year-old Lauren Richardson, who earns $56,000 as a financial advisor, which is about $22,000 more than her partner. Richardson also admits with her ex, with whom she has a child, that he has treated her out earning him as an assault on his masculinity. Another Captain Obvious highlight, that black women are more likely than other races of women to be the primary or sole earner in their marriages. College educated women and women with no children are also more likely to be higher earners than their husbands. For example, one 31 year old consultant in LA earns 225,000, which is about 190,000 more than her domestic partner. She pays about 80% of their expenses as a couple, but they have a domestic partnership agreement that requires their finances to be separate. This is a black woman and she tells Vanessa, I'm probably afraid of being made a fool of. She said, I'm a black woman and he is a white man. I couldn't stomach the possibility of having to pay a white man spousal support, even the one whom I plan to love for the rest of my life. And lastly, another woman wrote, the amount of ego stroking and making myself smaller so that a boyfriend doesn't get depressed or resentful or just mean about the fact that I am earning more 
is stomach churning. So that is all that I have to say on this for now. Of course, the Red Pill Dusties and the Pick Me's who support them will try to put toothpaste back in the tube by saying that women need to fall out of the workforce and back into the kitchen and that they should fall back into being mothers first. And then there are some other women on the other end of the power spectrum who won't even date a man who makes $50 less than them as a standard. But to get this conversation started, could you be the family wallet for your marriage? Should society accept that more and more women are financially supporting their husbands and families? Can a marriage last when a woman makes more than her man? Is it good enough that a husband is doing the best that he can do as a contributor, but not a full out provider? Should women just forget about marriage altogether when they are higher earners? And as always, thank you for listening and thank you for watching. And please stay tuned for more hypergamous conversations to come. And I will catch up with you ladies and lurkers and ear hustlers in the next one.